Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show, and the shadows descend here on a Friday afternoon, and I'm joined today by, um, he's affectionately known as the Mad King of Napa Valley, but uh, up here in Calistoga at the Satui Winery, Dario Satui, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Well, thank you for having me, Jake. Can you talk about um, the, um, the f when the wines were actually housed and grown in the in the city itself in San Francisco and Oakland? We talked about it during the in the but I wasn't sure about the years and okay. how they did that. Prior to the 1906 earthquake, there were quite a few wineries in the San Francisco Bay Area: Oakland, Richmond, Marin, and a, a fair amount in San Francisco. And it made sense because the roads were, there was no bridge, no right. bridges, and the roads were so bad, had you bottled the wine in Napa or Sonoma County, you probably would have broken a lot of bottles bringing them down in a wagon um, on the way to the market. And, and the market and your customers were in the metropolitan areas. So when my grand, great-grandfather started um, in 1885, he started in San Francisco as well. In fact, they stayed in San Francisco uh, until Prohibition, 1921, 22. But after the 06 earthquake, a lot of the wineries were destroyed or burned uh, because of the earthquake. Mm -hmm. And then they started moving out to the countryside and roads started improving as well. But I mean, where was your family at as it related to wine at that point? Um, oh, oh, Jake, don't uh, yeah, nope, take nope. this uh, by a 120 year old chair. Great grandfather's chair, my <laughs> God, already <laughs> sins. Um, well, they started in North Beach because uh, my great grandfather spoke Italian and French and they couldn't speak English. And uh, so it was a, a community there of Italians. And then they, uh, when the landlord raised the rent, they moved out to the Mission District which for them was a foreign district. It was Germans and Irish, so it was a different part of San Francisco. How did they assimilate to that? Um, it probably took a while. I don't. I didn't hear that story, but Italians were. They were called WAPs, though. Yeah, like, I mean, WAPs, they were, there was also Dagos. We were really looked down upon uh, as the new immigrant group um, uh, in California. Um, you said Italians really. As far as respect was concerned, it changed when cats like Rocky Marciano, Joe DiMaggio became uh, sort of folkloric. Can you, I mean, were there other cats that deserve outside of athletes that uh, from the Italian there, community? There may have been, but I think uh, I read this in any event that because we had some prominent Italian American athletes, it really, um, it really. He helped gain acceptance for Italians and Italian Americans, and and that's exactly what you said. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the most inspiring thing that's happened to Dario Satui in 2018? Oh boy! Um, <laughs> as far as the business, or as far as creativity, I mean, I, you know that that you know you can riff any way you want. We're one of them. Uh, well. Uh, um, you know, I, I'd have to think on that one, but again, this last year we've won a lot of awards. Which uh, ones? From Robert Parker, from Wine Spectator, Wine Enthusiast. Uh, I'm really proud of the wines from both wineries, and uh, we're doing well. And in my personal life, I got engaged to be married in 2020. Mazel tov. And uh, so that's a big event for me as well. Can you talk about well, the reason I'm here is because of the Renault Society. They just hosted a dinner at your at your right. uh, the castle. Is that right? That's correct. What can you talk about um, as it relates to dementia? As it relates to uh, you know different types of health um, benefits of moderate? Is it red wine, by the way, or all wine? Um, red wine has more health benefits than white wine. But all wines have benefits. Um, uh, not only dementia, but uh, the lessens the possibility of strokes, of heart attacks, uh, lessens the possibility of diabetes. Uh, uh, I can't remember.
remember them all now, but um, so th there are many, many health benefits. Colon uh, cancer. Yeah, and, and, um, with a moderate consumption of wine. Moderate with, with meals? I, I personally only drink, uh, it's not 100% of the time, but virtually only, here I am right now, I have a glass of wine, drink wine with my meals. The wine enhances the flavor of food, and in turn, the food brings out the full potential of the wine. So it's a symbiotic relationship where they both benefit. So I, I like wine with food. In fact, it's hard for me to have a meal except breakfast without a glass of wine. Except breakfast. Except breakfast. I mean, so, but you and, and moderate means two glass. A lot of people don't know what moderate means. Yeah, it, yeah every, for, I'm sure for everybody it's a different definition. I um, drink probably six tenths to two thirds of a bottle of wine a day, and uh, that'll be over lunch and over dinner. Uh, sometimes at lunch I don't have any wine, or I have a half a glass and I'll have most of my wine consumption at dinner when it doesn't tire me for any work that I'm going to do. How much did you find? I mean, there are cats, I can't remember the names offhand, but, uh, you know, it's a uh, storybook winery, uh, the, the guy who owns that, and, and, and Bob, uh, Bob Bialy. I mean, these guys are, are they're lovers, they're farmers, first. and skill than I and uh, in and what ways did they have knowledge what, 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 what well, I, I, I studied business accounting finance marketing and I never uh, went to Davis or Fresno State to study enology or video culture so I in the beginning I knew practically nothing and uh, I got a lot of help essentially from um, uh, a Sutter home uh, from Bob Trincaro, and uh, and I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. The first couple of years, the wines were mediocre, um, and I got better, but I was still never as good as uh, academically trained winemakers. And now we have a great winemaker. His name's Brooks Painter. He's in charge of both wineries, and then we have winemakers at each winery under his tutelage, but uh, the wines are, are really good now, and uh, it's good I'm staying away from the winemaking aspect. You you really, how do you know they were subpar? Is it only in hindsight, or at the time you were like, this is only so, this is only, uh, it's not doing it. I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, you know, I read books and so forth, but it's no, it's no substitute for years of experience. I did get some help. You know, I, I had no money, and so I, I'd give Bob Trucaro a bag of salami and cheese and bread because <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't pay any money. And uh, he'd come over and give me a hand, or one of his guys uh, would come over and give me a hand a little bit. But uh, you know, I mean, they weren't horrible the wines, but they were they were very average in quality, and um, they've gotten a lot better over the years. So you, the bottom line is that you've been able to take resources and put and really push them into the, your creative realm. Um, and I, I, how did the castle, the genesis, how did the idea of the castle start? You know, I can't say exactly. Um, and was it your, was it your idea alone? Yeah, it was my idea. Mm -hmm. I, I have a real passion for medieval architecture. Uh, I did years and years of research, never knowing. I would build the castle, but it, just because I love doing the research. I went into hundreds and hundreds of farmhouses in Tuscany and Umbria, uh, palaces, uh, churches, uh, castles. When I couldn't get in, 
I'd break in, uh, you know, never steal anything. I would always, always <laughs> brought a hammer with me to hammer the door back, or I'd pry a window open. Or I'd find a way to get in, or I'd dress up, pretend I had money, which I didn't, suit and tie, and I'd go to a realtor and tell them I wanted to buy a castle. What do you have to show me? And so I, I was able to see most of the things I wanted to see in one way or another. And <clears throat> so I... I it's a disease for me. It's it's almost like a, a beautiful woman. I can't resist beautiful architecture, and um, actually, I'm trying to resist beautiful women now. That that's right. Now that you're, I mean, that's going to be a major quandary. But um, so I bought a, a monastery, a thousand year old monastery from the late 10th century, uh, 27 years ago. No, 26 years ago. I um, bought a Medici palace. That's actually Renaissance. Uh, 1587, I have a partner in a, 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 a medieval a hotel uh, uh, um, uh, castle, and I've almost bought several other properties. I bought a castle in France, so I, I you know, I, I, I'm incurable. And um, you're manic about this stuff. I, I love it, and I, but the problem is I, I don't use my head. I just anyway. When I bought this property, yeah. I bought it for this house. I love this house. It's three story, a beautiful old Victorian for the history. It's settled by Colonel William Nash, after whose family Nashville, Tennessee is named. I, um, I, I was going to re, um, replant Nash's old vineyard and sell the grapes to Visatui. I had no idea I was going to start a second winery. But this property came with this great building permit. And I gave zero value to the permit because I was about early 50s. I was going to semi-retire. Right. Visa Tui was doing well, live in Europe six months a year. But it came with a permit to produce 250,000 gallons of wine, the last public tour and tasting permit ever given in Napa Valley. That was in January 1989, before the wine redefinition ordinance of 1990 which means anybody could just walk into the winery. Now, any winery after 1990 um, has to reserve um, a, a tasting, most of them cheap. But if the county wants to crack down, they're supposed to reserve an event. And then the third thing I inherited was a uh, building permit for 130,000 square feet. And the former owner took 13 years to get this permit, and I gave zero value to it. I didn't care about starting another winery. Then after a few months, I thought, well, I've always wanted to produce small lots of some really high quality Italian wine, and I love medieval architecture. I'll build a little building, uh, Italian style uh, medieval building, and, um, and it morphed into now almost 150,000 square feet. Can I Yeah, go, that? go, go ahead. <laughs> We're here at the Satui Winery, heading up to the castle. Uh, have some. Let's check out what this is here. He thinks it's radio. ready all yeah let's do it um, the castle has eight levels four above ground and four below ground and about 70 percent of the 107 rooms are below ground one below another below another below another and it's all the ideas I saw in Europe over a period of years that I never thought I would utilize and every room is different there are no two rooms of the 107 that are alike and it was a creative way of expressing myself. Um, and I don't want to diminish the quality of the wines. The wines are great. And so it's been a, um, a balanced effort creating something beautiful that I, I, I really love and, and, and creating really outstanding, primarily Italian style wines. So what, what you're saying is you eventually you made, the castle is a winery. Absolutely, it's a winery. 
So how did you merge the different century, your influences of the different centuries into building that castle? I mean, there's, you know, you have this sort of storybook vision of, you know, the, you have a moat, you have a drawbridge, but what are some of the architectural things that you uh, incorporated in from what time period? First of all, the castle is my creation. I designed probably 80% of it. Architect uh, John Lale did what I told him to do, and that was a condition of me hiring him. Um, I, I wanted to be as authentic as I could. Uh, we have five towers, we have a deep well, they had to have a source of water. We have a, a church, we have a, a little chapel, they were very religious. We have a royal apartment. Uh, we you have, have a synagogue? A, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we That's cool, man. I didn't know you had a chapel we were in Gentiles. there. Yeah, I know. And um, although back in my past, one of my older relatives said that the reason we left France was because we were Jewish and Napoleon was persecuting the Jews. But I don't know. If Do you have credibility true. in that in that ancestor? Uh, so we may be part Jewish. Uh, that's beautiful. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Chapel. I, I what else? You, you needed a well for water. Yeah. yeah so we uh, we have stables. Uh, we, uh, we have courtyards. Everything that a medieval castle would have had. Again, it was a composite of all the things I saw over a period of years, primarily in Italy, but also France, Austria, and Germany. Um, the Renault Society. What what do you believe their contribution is to the world at this point? Only, and I ask you in the sense of the, the debate about what we just talked about earlier, which was moderate wine uh, wine consumption with with healthy meals and amongst people versus abstinence only. It seems to be a versus what abstinence only. No wine corks, like you said. Half of America doesn't have a wine cork. So how does Renault Society further the debate on? the benefits of moderate red wine, or, you know, red uh, wine consumption and heart health. Oh boy. Uh, first of all, I measure my success not so much by money, but I measure, if I can make people happy, uh, you know, they buy my product, I make them happy, they want to return, and they spread the word among their friends, I think I've done it all. And I think, the wines, both wineries, Visitui and Casale Amorosa, give a lot of pleasure to people. I'm sure some people abuse the consumption of those wines, but uh, I moderate consumption of wine with family, with friends, uh, with meals, um, it, it's a little bit euphoric, it's good for your health, it promotes conversation, uh, promotes gaiety, and um, uh, it's hard for me to imagine a world without wine, especially wine with food and with friends. Oh, Jesus. We're almost done. Okay. Yeah, well, you're a busy guy. Right? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, but it, specifically, what is the relation? Is it really about cardiologists, doctors educating people about the health benefits of wine? Okay, uh, there have been a lot of scientific studies done. I've read some of them, I don't know all of them. And over. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Holiday party this evening. Uh. I'm here, I'm doing a radio interview. Is it possible we talk later? Oh yeah, who, who is it? Oh yeah, hi, hi. Hey, how about tomorrow morning? Is that, is that okay? Okay, thanks Kevin. Beautiful book sex. Old friend Kevin Weil. I haven't talked to him in several years. Well, where were we? It was the yeah, idea of cardiology, of... the, the doctor perspective on okay. riff on that. A, a lot of studies done, and over and over again, these studies demonstrate that in various ways, wine is beneficial for one's health, and that um, it promotes longevity, it, it, it promotes so many health aspects 
that why would anybody not want to drink wine? And I, um, <laughs> my girlfriend, my Russian uh, fiance, she just came in. Um, she didn't drink wine before she met me. Now we almost squabble over over uh, the bottle, and uh, and uh, she's a big wine consumer, almost essentially reds, and and has a real good palate as well. Um, but um, so she's been a, a good convert for me. Do, um, you were a huge music fan back in the day. Music, you, the music fan. Uh, you, you, um, you, certain types of music. Like, um, did you promote mu uh, concerts at all? Or I did. I actually, I did. When I was in junior college, I promoted. A, I, I was a manager of a band, and I. What was um, the band's name? Uh, boy, I don't even remember anymore. And where was this? Fifty in, years ago. Was it the Bay Area? In, yeah, Marin County. And we, oh we had uh, we had concerts in, in Marin and in Sonoma County, and uh, also on the Russian River and Rio Nido. And uh, in any case, I, mean, I did that for a year or two. I mean, would you say it was like a, a folk band? Was it psych rock? No, no it was a, a rock band. And when I was in college, uh, you know, uh, junior and senior, I liked folk music and rock. And now I, I like. Primarily classical music. Well, yeah, but what was your where? What years were you at Berkeley? Well, first I went to San Jose State and graduated from there, and then I um, got a master's MBA at Berkeley in '69. In '69. Yeah, that's when all the student revolution was going on. I mean, did you? How involved? What was the the milieu at that time? I mean, you were here. You were getting a business degree. I get that, but. I mean, well, actually, I wasn't business. I was running a business while I was going to graduate school. I was always running a business. Always running a business. Um, did you ever uh, know the Merry Pranksters? Uh, guys like no, who? the Merry Pranksters, like Ken Kesey. No, never. No. What's on? What's on? Uh, what is the most? Uh, what are the things you want to accomplish? Have you even thought about it uh, in the new year? What are What are some, just personal things? How are you looking to grow as a as a as a, hum, as a human being? Well, first thing, I want to take care of my health. Um, three years ago, I broke my neck in a bicycle accident. I can't turn my neck anymore. Uh, and uh, and now I need a total knee replacement of my neck, knee, which I'll get in about three weeks. Um, um, I'm starting to give back to the community. We've, we've always given to the community, but now I'm starting to give back in much greater amounts um, I, I've made some money, I've been somewhat successful, and uh, I, I financed a good part of a new boys and girls club. I was the one that got the ball rolling. Um, I've, um, I bought a, a food truck for uh, people who don't have enough to eat or elderly, they can't get to a supermarket. That this is local every, stuff? or Yeah, just it's all, all Napa County. Every day goes up and down the valley handing out meals. So, I've done, in the last three, four, five years, a lot of stuff. I've contributed to hospice, uh, Boy Scouts, uh, on and on and on. And, um, and I'm going to do more of that. I, I've uh, given to uh, wildlife organizations and so forth. And more and more I'm going to do that. My idea is to spend the money I've made before I die, I don't want to spend it before I die, but the idea is when invest I die, it, I have zero. It. And uh, I don't really want a lot of things. I, I may buy another medieval property, who knows, because I'm a sucker for that. But, <laughs> but I, I, I plan on giving a lot of my money away. So um, I just have to find the right, uh, uh, right causes. So One final question for you, Dario, before you go to your holiday uh, party. Um, you know, you wound up, uh, you were a street scholar as it related to the wine business. I was a what? A street scholar. Meaning that you didn't go to San, Santa Cruz. You didn't go and get academiaized. You, you got, um, you started with $6,000. You raised some money. You had no clue what you were doing. So my question is, what is your advice to, to, to cats that have a desire to uh, have a startup winery in, in, in Sonoma, Napa Valley? My, Today. My first advice is figure out how you're going to sell it before you decide to go into business. Winemaking is not easy, 
but it's the easier of the two parts. Um, uh, if you can't figure out how to sell it, uh, unless you have a lot of money and you're willing to lose a fair amount of it, probably you should not go into the wine business. There's been a real consolidation of distributors and um, they have all the power. They'll eat you alive. Um, they'll, um, they'll demand great prices. They'll demand samples. They'll um, demand that you or, or your winemaker or you go on a nationwide tour um, to sell the wine. And then when you leave, they'll forget you. Now, if you're a handful of wineries, Camus, uh, Farniente, uh, Monte, Chateau Monolina, Gurgic, then you have some power. But if you're Joe Blow Winery, especially your new winery, you have no power. And um, so figure out how you're going to sell it. We always went to tact both wineries of selling everything direct. We more or less invented that years ago, uh, 40 odd years ago. You invented, you invented that? Well, pretty much. I mean, who was doing it then? And, uh, and, and now a lot of people are doing it as well in the last 10 years or so. But, but uh, we were one of the first to ever do that. Can you still do the picnics? You, you did everything relentlessly to get people off the road. Can you still do that? Or has it just become yeah, very uh, uptight uh, around here? Uh, the one smart thing I did at Visa Tui Winery prior to opening was I bought commercial property. We could have put a bowling alley in there, wow. supermarket, whatever we wanted. And that's why we were able to have the delicatessen and the picnic grounds. So th that was that was the reason, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, can you can somebody still do that if they want to come? I mean, if they want to just come up, can they, can they hustle? There, there's almost no commercial property available along Highway 29 or the Silverado Trail. It's, it's almost impossible. Uh, I, I, would th I would say, venture to say, there's really no commercial property available. And there were only three available in 1973 when I formulated my business plan. You lost money for a while? No, I never lost money. So then how are this, these cats today? I mean, because the risk is so, the, the financial risk is so great, how are they going to know how to sell their wine if they never sold it? Well, I tried to invent every reason in the world, like you said, to get people off the highway. Uh, exactly. I, think, I didn't want to be too far what south. Would you, when you drive down today, you say, what would you, we like, boy, if I was 19 again, this is what I would do. What, what's an idea, what's an organic idea that you can still do that you did back then? Well, first of all, it'd be hard, hard to find a, a retail location, at least. At least in hey, my, whoa, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the dance, my friend. At least in my area. Yeah. But um, I... I I came up with a lot of creative reasons. For instance, you didn't want to be on the left-hand side um, unless you had a monument like uh, Robert Mondavi. People on the left-hand side going to the city, they're tired, they've spent their money, they're going home, uh, or, or they have to turn left on the way up Valley, and most people won't do that. Right. I mean, it, you know, it takes a little bit of effort unless there's a real good reason, Barringer, Mandami, something like that. Um, I, I, I put in the deli. I put in the picnic grounds. We were dog friendly. We were f family friendly. Um, a million reasons. We, we were the first ones to do weddings. We were the second ones to have a wine club after Inglenook. Uh, just all kinds of things. I did it totally different. I was dumb and I was ignorant enough not to know what I should have done. Had I known what I should have done, I probably would have been followed everybody out. No, I don't know that I would have, but maybe I would have. In any case, because of my ignorance and my naivety, I did it my way, which was totally different. Everybody laughed at me. Every, everybody, including my wife at the time, said I was going to go broke. Right. We, we made not much, but a little bit of money first year and never lost money. Dr. Satui, thank you so much. I look forward to coming back and documenting individual rooms of the castle when we have the opportunity. Uh, it was really an honor to connect thank with you. Thank you. I'm sorry for all these interruptions. And my dog likes a little limelight, too. Life is an in, in interruption, my friend. Thank you, brother. Have a happy New Year, yeah. man. Yeah, I, thank you, Jake. I, and again, I'm sorry for the interruption. No, no. Did you enjoy it? Did you have a good time? Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. And if you want to do more um, over the weekend, we can do that. It just... You arrived late, and, uh, uh, yeah. and now I have to be somewhere. No, go there, man. People are having a ball. Much love to you, Dario. Take care. Thank you, Jake.